and like, ah, you're too noisy. I'm like, I said, you don't have to be around me. Friendship may actually go beyond just relating on a, a superficial, play, a superficial basis. basis. There's the adage that says, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. There are some of us who are not very good at regular visits, but oh. because they are friends, you have to order to maintain that friendship. The emotional state of the parents is usually directly proportional to the emotional state of, of the children. Hello viewers, welcome to our favorite family show, The Living Room, right here on Equa Television International. Um, this last episode or last two episodes, we've talked about relationship, um, how to know when to move to the next level in a relationship. That's what we talked about the last time we were here. Um, this time around, we want to move into what now to do when you have moved to the next level, that is courtship. My name is Amaka Ucheke, and right here with me is Mrs. I.B. Namo. Good evening, viewers. Yes. So before we delve into it, um, last week somebody asked a question. Um, she sent it in because she couldn't call, and we didn't answer. So I want us to start with answering the question. And she asked, what can you do if the guy around you He's not coming forth with anything. He's not saying anything. How can you make him say something? <laughs> How can you make him say something to move to the next level? What do you do? I know you've talked about, you talked about that last time, but mm. just maybe so that she, she has her questions answered Answer. directly. Okay. Um, first of all, when somebody is around you all the time and he's not saying anything, you need to ask questions. Okay. And there are different approaches to this thing. It depends on what you think, will, what you feel you should do by yourself. But I think you need to ask questions. Uh, Oga, what is the problem? I'm always seeing you here. I know that we are close, and you are not the only brother that is close to me, but there is one close, this closeness is too close, and I want you to define it. You know, ask questions. I have done that before. I asked question and the person was telling me, eh, actually he wants me to wait for him. He's dealing with something. I said, so I'm on reserve bench. <laughs> I, I think you said that last time. Yeah, yes, I should be yeah. waiting for you to sort out yourself. I can't do that. You know, so you need to ask questions. Because I understand there was a lady I was told that he was around a man like that for a very long time. The man will be saying, ah, you are a wife material. She will cook for the man. Mm. She will wash his clothes. She will do everything. Ah, the man will be celebrating her until at a meeting, the guy came with his real girlfriend and introduced her and the lady fainted, you know, because she has, they've not defined the relationship. I think if relationship is becoming too close, you need to give it a definition. Don't just relax and feel like, oh, it's okay. I think he said he, he when they said, did he tell you he loves you? Because he can use it against you tomorrow. Did I ever tell you I wanted to marry you? No. He and I've heard, I've, I've, yeah. heard, I've heard people say that. The, yes. That I didn't tell her anything. anything. I didn't commit. Yeah. And I'm like, but your actions showed that something. We said, but I didn't say anything. Then you need to define. That's why yeah. you need to define it. You yeah. need to ask questions. What is going on? I hope if you see me with somebody, you'll not be frowning because you are not saying anything. You've been around me for a while. So I had to ask questions. You know, so, so it's good so to ask you questions. Ask, have to ask first. Yeah. And be sure you define relationship. Yeah. Don't just allow things, things fluid walk. like that, yeah. especially when you see that you're getting too close to the person. Exactly. You need to define what is going on yeah. so that you know you're on the same page. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and I think another thing too that is helpful is don't be keeping secrets. You must have people that you confide in. Exactly. People who know what is going on in your life. Mm. So that um, even if you are going in the wrong direction, somebody can yeah. tell you. Yeah, this thing. You, this you know, so one, that one lady met a pastor and said that she's having this brother who is always coming. Every, every, she, he buys things for her. He does things for her. She feels that he loves her. So the pastor said, no, don't, be, don't let it not be based on your own feeling. Ask him, what does he want? 
He said, ah, if I ask him, won't he feel that I'm cheap? He said, you're already cheap by allowing him to continue to give mm. you gifts, to continue to be there. You people are doing emotional blackmail with each other. So you need to define it so that somebody will not feel that my heart is broken tomorrow, so that you will know. Sometimes you may not even want this kind of a person for a husband, or you may not want this kind of a That's lady okay, yeah. for a wife. And yet the person is hanging around you, he buys you gifts, he washes your clothes, he cleans the house, and you are just enjoying it's, it's not your wife or your husband. And then so blocking the road blocking from other serious people. Other serious people. So you, it, the relationship needs to be defined. Okay, so um, for this person who is asking, if yeah. the brother is not saying anything, you need to speak Act. with him yeah. and let's define the relationship. Okay. Yeah. Not that she should go and propose that she No, I'm not him. saying you should go and say, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but if you maybe if you feel led to say okay I love I love you I want to marry what I don't I have not come to the point where I agree that a lady should propose I don't know why but define the relationship I think that's where I stand yeah, yeah. okay yeah. you should define the relationship okay now you've raised something I don't know this courtship whether we're going to enter into huh. but I want to ask so why 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 would people keep people hanging and not commit? Why? Because people need to, because I've seen it happen to so many, yeah. you know, people. They are hanging around somebody sometimes for years mm -hmm. and nothing is happening. Then suddenly you hear the person is getting married to somebody, somebody else and you are broken. I think the thing is people enjoy the company of some persons for okay. whatever reason. And they also do not see those people as people they can be in a marriage with. But maybe because, okay, take for instance, a man, he met this lady. He doesn't feel attracted to her. But the lady is a homely person. She loves to do chores. She loves. So he takes her and allows her to continue to be there. You know, she comes to his house. She does his chores. She cooks for him. She, you know, some of them go to the extent of even having uh, uh, sexual intimacy. And they just stay there. They're just hanging around so each other. Is it, so is it just like they enjoy hanging with each other? Exactly. They're having free services exactly. at no cost to you. Exactly. So you have exactly. a washerwoman, a, a cook, cook, a sex partner, partner that at you no are, cost to you. Exactly. You, 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 nobody is going to hold you to ransom because I didn't ask for it. She willingly gave me. Or for the man, the, every time you buy gift, you give her a gift. If she says her mother is in the hospital, you are the first person to, to visit. If she says uh, her brother's school fees is due, you are the one that will come and say, okay, take, go and pay your brother's school fees. You are the one sponsoring her in school. You are the ones doing everything. And tomorrow she's going out to somebody else and you want to buy a gun and shoot her. You know, did you tell her you were going to marry her in the first place? So you just, you're just the girl is just enjoying the benefit of you being around. So that's why the relationship needs to be defined. Please don't hang around anybody. Yeah. I think that's to the people who hang around. Hang around and yeah. those who have people hanging around them, don't define let them. it. Don't, yeah, don't let, let them. them. Because um, a case happened in our area once. We know a lady started a shop. She was selling these phone things. And then one day, unfortunately, one guy came and shot her to death. Wow. Yes, in her shop. It was... It was traumatic for everybody because they know the lady. She got married to somebody else. And somebody came to her. She got married. I don't think it's up to two, three months she got married. The mm. man came to the shop and shot her to death. It's like damning the consequences and walked away. I don't know whether he was arrested later. What could be the cause? You know, when we started asking questions, he said he was the one who trained her. Oh. He was the one who paid her through school fees. The business he's doing, he was the one who buy, bought it. it for her, started everything for her, only for her to show up with a man and got married to the man without explain, telling her anything. So he was so furious. I'm not saying you should get to that level. Mm, I think I, I, I because don't you don't want it to get to that level, you need to deal with it. Because I saw, I watched something on social media recently. Somebody was judging a case between a lady and a guy. And um, the problem was that the lady was she, she, she was not doing well. She was a big lady somewhere, but while in school, this guy was training her. Mm. They were in school together, but he was hustling and trying to raise money the to pay their, their their fees and all. And they were living together. Well, that one is also a problem. Uh -huh. So along the line, he had to drop out of school because he couldn't fend for both of them 
in school. So he dropped out and was riding as an Okada, a bike driver. And uh, she now graduated, went for NYC, and says his phone calls were disturbing her. Mm -hmm. So they brought both of them and they were having the discussion. And she says, look, she appreciates, she agrees that the guy trained her. She appreciates what he did and she wants to settle him. The guy said he doesn't want to settle, he wants to marry her. She laughed. She said, I can't marry you now. You're a bad driver. Can you imagine? <laughs> a driver. But she was collecting the money yeah, of a I can't marry driver. you. My level has changed. I can't marry you. So, so they were now talking to the other. Just collect the money. She agreed to give him five million. So somebody said, collect the five million and go and start your business. The guy said he doesn't want any money. What he wants is to marry her. You know, there is emotions him. involved. Yeah. Because he was doing those things with emotional attachment. So what is being hurt right now is not his money per se. It is his emotion that has been toiled with. And such people, if they don't manage that crisis properly, yeah, it he's going to, to, yes, he's going to end up harming her, you know, if he finds a way. Except God helps and they are able to manage it properly. So that's why we're saying, as a girl, when a man is doing all of this for you, you should ask questions. Don't say, did I beg you? Yeah, did I, hear, I, I hear some I, say, I, I didn't beg I him. I didn't beg. It doesn't no. make sense. You didn't beg him and he's doing all of this thing. Can you do all of that for somebody and not think that the person wants yeah. something from you? So you need to be careful yeah. how so, you are. So I think the, I think the message life. here is yeah. not just hanging, letting people should not hang around you with, without defining what you people are yeah. doing. And then for the ladies especially, don't be collecting gifts. The longer truth is too much. Don't be collecting uh, gifts. You know somebody, you, are not, you don't want to marry the person. Why are you collecting gifts? You say exactly. you didn't ask him. There's something like no now. Uh -huh. And you can say, nicely say no, I, I can't accept this from you. Or why are you giving me gifts? Exactly. I don't need it. How can somebody spend spending so much money he on you? He spent you, went, what do you think no, was his, in nice. his mind when he was paying all of those? You think he was doing a charity work? Are you the only charity case in the university? <laughs> Why was he doing that charity for you? He had something in mind. And I'm sure you knew yeah. that he had that in mind. Oh, you just, you just you played just the ostrich, played yes, and pretend, and pretend as if, uh -huh, when the time comes, I know how to find. You may not be able to escape it because, like I said, that lady ended up dead. Mm. And her husband will marry somebody else. Yeah. And then some, some, um, some end up marrying people they didn't plan to marry because of, you know that, yeah. That scripture that says a man's gift makes way for him, I think yes. it works both positively and negatively. Negative, yeah. If somebody keeps giving you gifts and you keep accepting, mm. after a while, you may not know when you will start working in the direction you didn't plan to work on. And that's because karma of the gift now. Karma is there and then too. some people, I don't know, people say people do some diabolic things with some gifts that that's they give exactly. you. Exactly. So you will go and chop, according to the, you eat, you will collect, you say you didn't beg them, and suddenly yeah. you, you, you. There know. was also a case that trended on the social media of a girl, although I don't know, I don't think it's in Nigeria, outside somewhere, a girl who w was trained by a man and ev did everything for him, for her, and then at the time that he was ready to marry her, they now the family arranged for her to marry somebody else, and wow. she too agreed. On the day of the wedding, diabolical. On the day of the, day of the wedding. The wedding ceremony was going on only for them to hear, to see the girl. They even put it on social media. I see the girl with a snake around her neck. The snake kept her to the ground. She couldn't move. They had to start looking for a way to rescue the girl, begging the man to please set her free. Release her. He said he will never release her because he, he invested in the family. And you know, in fact, wicked parents, it's, it's parents. wicked parents. Please parents, be careful. Why will you be collecting a man gifts is bringing gifts to your house. First of all, it's not marry. even that your daughter has agreed to marry the man. Some of you, your daughter has not even agreed. And you are the one collecting all the mm. gifts and thanking the so man. So it's not only gifts. I've seen the man renovating house. houses. Uh -huh. You know, the man has money to renovate your house, change things, and you'll be collecting. Parents, please Let's be careful, respect please, yourself. I think please. we should, we should, we should respect ourselves, and then not even just because of um, diabolic things that yeah. can happen to you. A Come Christian on. should be a person of honor. Yeah, you should be a person integrity, of honor. Integrity. Yeah. Integrity. Uh -huh. So what you know you, you don't want, don't eat from that place. Exactly. And then say, after all, I didn't beg him, I didn't ask him, I didn't this and that. It's not nice. Uh -huh. It's not nice. It's not right. Uh -huh. So I think if if we don't want somebody. Please don't collect 
-hmm. any gift from the person saying thank you mm -hmm. and you know no thank you now this was a kind gesture but no thank no, you thanks. and as she had also mentioned earlier you must define it. Oh, why are you always coming here? Why are you bringing me gifts? What is it? What's what going exactly on? is going on? And then on? if he tells you what it is and you're not interested, let nicely him know. say no and let him yeah. go. Yeah. You know, don't hold him down as uh, your plan B. Hmm. <clears throat> Why are you is... waiting for plan A to show up? <laughs> uh -huh. You'll be, you be um, making him spend money. Don't even, not normally self, I don't even know why you expect somebody to be spending so much on you. On you. That is not your spouse. Because I think, I think the you. girls are, 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 are more into such uh, behavior where a girl expects a man. Wait, yeah, it's, and why it's don't looking like you, it's an expectation. Why don't you take care of yourself and work for your own money? No, it, 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 people you, just take it for granted. You know, you just feel that he's that, a man. He's supposed to spend If you're in a relationship with yeah, any man, he must he be must, spending money on you. Spend on me. And are you also spend, spending on him? No, no. You are the woman and he's so, the man. And I, then when the guy is now ask you for other things, like you, sex, you start uh, complaining, complaining that uh, they're always asking for sex. Why should somebody... It's his investment now. Oh. You don't expect somebody hmm. to be spending money on you. What are you doing for him? Oh. That uh, he should just be spending money on you for the sake... And I see some... I see girls leaving that... Um, they have that uh, slay, slay mentality... Queens. Square, slay, uh, mentality... Borrowed slay queens. Mm, menta that people owe them something. So anywhere... Even I see... You know, I hear guys complaining. You, a girl just walks up to You People buy me shawarma now. I say, ah, you too buy shawarma for the guys. And they so they want, why should you uh -huh. just entitlement mentality? Exactly. Because, because you're a fine girl or uh -huh. you think you're a fine girl, people should not rest again. Uh -huh. So buy me, buy me shawarma now. Help me. Or they'll, they'll be sending people, sending the boys as if they're their house boys. Yeah. Help me. And some foolish boys because they're so excited uh, about, about the a girl. girl that the fine girl smiled at you. You too. Yeah. Mugu. <laughs> you'll be going. They'll be sending you, know? you. Go and buy me pure water. You go and, go and, and buy me back. this. Come buy me that. Ah, I'm hungry. Buy me food. Meanwhile, with the money your parents gave you, you're only eating once a day exactly. and drinking Gary the second one. You now pack that small money and go and give girl. That yeah. is nothing to you. She has no plans of marrying uh -huh. you. She doesn't even really like you. Uh -huh. She's just using you. Uh -huh. Please, everybody, buy sense for yourself. And that of the girl, you just become a housewife that nobody ah. entitled housewife. You will hmm. go to the man's house. I asked a girl once like that that was living with a young man. I said, um, you are washing his clothes. He said, yes, you are cooking for him. He said, yes. I said, when you were living with your father, how many times did you wash oh. your father's clothes? She was looking at me. I said, so you, do, you, you have not washed for your father. You are washing for a man who doesn't even, hmm. who is not even thinking of you. What kind of, what, I, don't, I don't know. How are you no thinking? Sense. What no kind sense. of sense is that? You you be washing his clothes. You go to his house. You clean his house, and the man too is feeling boss. He will, oh. he will be go, walking around and feeling good about himself that you are the one taking care of his needs. And you know, then when when he is now says he's not interested, you want to cry. What are you crying for? And then even undergraduates, uh -uh. undergraduate. Somebody told oh, me God. She, she was in a relationship where the guy was saying he she doesn't come to cook, mm. wash, clean. He start shouting. So once she finished from her lecture, she just drop her rush and go rush and to his house. Go and go and start. I, I was like, eh? Are you okay? Your fellow student? Are you okay? He said yes. That he was a, that uh, she has to be, begin to prepare how to be a wife. I said, <laughs> school that you both your parents are paying for Pay you school. to read. Her. Is it paying? Your and this is the reason why some girls are not doing well yeah. in school. Uh, that day I was so upset. Uh -huh. When I got home, of course I called my daughters and started warning them that yeah. if I ever hear hmm. hear yeah. that you are oh, doing house girl or housewife uh. for somebody in school. I said that uh, where I was living way. before I got married, uh, I had a neighbor, a young man. I don't know whether he was interested, but we we're close. You know, he's a Christian, we're Christian. One day he came to my house and said that I should give him my mortar to pound. He wanted to pound the yam. So I carried my mortar and gave him. He said, ah, wouldn't I follow him and go and pound the yam for him? I say, as who? That, ah, ah, that do I know how many girls? I say, call them now. I say, Girls, this is not girls. This is Ibwebwe Sarah. You can repeat the name after me. I cannot go to say. So if you come to my house and I pound you and you eat, I say, of Why course, not? I you will balance. It. I eat because if you two come to my house and I cook, I give you you eat. But to go to your house and ask who, I can't do that. Please, please, ladies, don't cheapen yourself. Don't go. 
see you can you you the guy will not know it it, it doesn't make the guy love you you know no. doing all of those will not make the guy if he doesn't love you he doesn't love you and that's one thing i found out about men men yeah. maybe you can you book and the uh, counteract what i'm saying uh -huh. if a man does not like you he doesn't, he doesn't like want to you. marry you if you like shed your blood he will not it's not going to happen exactly. nothing will happen Exactly. But when they are ready to marry somebody, even uh -uh. if the person is misbehaving, they will marry They'll the be following the person. Pure, 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 so if you are killing yourself, he's not ready, he's not ready, he doesn't want you, uh -huh. there's nothing you can do to change his mind. Uh -huh. So, girls, I mean, let's move on to this courtship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what we're saying, courtship, what, what do we mean? Well, I think, okay, both of you have found each other. And um, <clears throat> you want to, you are friends now, you know, not just friends, you are friends that are preparing to, mar to get married. And, you know, you are beginning, some people will say you are studying each other, even though I don't believe in that, you cannot really study any human being. Because it is what somebody wants you to know about him or her that you are going to know. If the person doesn't want you to know him or not, doesn't want you to know her, you know, we, pre we can pretend very well oh, in yeah. courtship. Oh, yeah. You know, we oh. can hide all the, the who we are away from the man. But that's, it is a, that, that, that's a why period of, yeah. That friendship time yeah. is the time to know people. Exactly. When there's no pressure, uh -huh. no plan for anything, yeah. you, 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 make, you make friends with people yeah. and get to know people better, yeah. you know. So you, you have an idea what kind of person So it's person time is. to begin to introduce yourself to your family, it's time to begin to think together. Okay, if we get married, what is our plan? What do we think we are going to be? Are we going to have two incomes? Okay, if we are going to have two incomes, what would you want to be doing? It is not time to allot um, um, what you should do, but it's a time of to discussion. Talk. Not to say, ah, I don't want my wife to work. I want you to stay at home. That's the kind of wife I want to marry. No. The girl has her dream, she has her aspiration, mm. and your getting married to you does not mean she's going to lose herself. Mm. She's going to still be her, but you, you are going to complement each other. So, okay, now this is what we want to do. How do you think, you know, so it's a time of discussion. In fact, it's a time to even discuss your, tradi your, your culture. Because, okay, I'm married to somebody from Nasra State and I'm from Edo State. Unfortunately, we did not discuss anything. So when I got married, things like culture, we didn't discuss any of that. So when I got married and I started hearing that I have to come with all my bridesmaids and they will sweep the compound. And I was like, What's that? what is the meaning of that one? First of all, I don't even have bridesmaid. I only have a, a maid of honor, only one. And I didn't have any bridesmaid. So who is going to sweep the compound? Thank God I have a sister-in-law who understands and say she's not from your culture, so she doesn't know how to do this. That was worse. What if I didn't have that kind of a person? I'll be in trouble, you know. So you need to discuss some of these things. In fact, when we, the first time we went to my husband's village, they said I have to go and fetch water for mm. one old woman. I'm, I'm like, I've never carried this kwano on my mm. head before. How am I going to start? I actually went to fetch the water. Half of it poured on the way. So these are things you should discuss and prepare yourself for it. And, you know, agree that, okay, this we're not going to do, this we're going to do. These are things you should know. There are some people who just goes in, go into the marriage. When they hit the ground, that things will start popping up. Say, ah, you didn't tell me this. You didn't tell me that. Because they didn't, so, have, they didn't take time you didn't to take talk. That. So it's not just about... Um, eating shawarma together or, you know, That's and all that. Uh -huh. it's time, it's, it's, it should be a time of talking, a time of interaction, a time of knowing your families, telling the person who you are, what your dreams are, what your aspirations are. You know, you can have a plan for the next 10 years. If we got married in 10 years, then what is going to be it? What are we going to be having? How many children are we expecting, you know? If God gives us more, what if we don't have children? What is going to happen? I think things like that should be should discussed. Be discussed. You know? I also think um, that period too is a time to know whether things can work or not work. Exactly. As people are discussing the issues. Exactly. Like you said, the about the person who says he doesn't want his wife to work. Work. If for, the, if for the other person, this is just an example, but for other issues, if you know it's something you are not willing to do, don't go is, into that is the it. time yeah. to back out and yeah. say, look, I'm not... Because it doesn't make sense if somebody says, I don't want you to work. 
you say okay. No problem. Then, then once you, you get married, married you, you say you want, you want to, walk. to walk. Then you will start fighting. Mm -hmm. But because the person didn't pretend. He told mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You two should have thought about it and decide whether it's something you want to do mm -hmm. or not. You shouldn't be so desperate to marry that you throw away all your dreams mm -hmm. and, and aspirations. aspirations because you'll be frustrated. One so. of the things you should never take into relationship or courtship is desperation. All your friends may be married. It doesn't mean that you, something is wrong with you. It's just your time that is not, it's not your time. So mm -hmm. wait for your time. Don't be desperate. If you enter into marriage with desperation, you are going to have a lot of problems. And because if you are desperate, you are going to settle for anything. Yeah, anything. And you yeah. shouldn't settle for anything. You should mm -hmm. have values and standards that exactly. th this is, uh, you know, this is where I stand. Yeah. Uh, and then one other thing I also noticed, this period, because we, we, uh, we do counseling, premarital counseling for mm. people. And I find out that some couples, it's when they come for counseling, they each hear their salvation story for the exactly. first time. And I'm like, so what are people, what have people been talking about? They don't discuss is it shawama? anything. Shawama, is it what people pizza, talking about? ice cream, let's go for friend party and all of that. Okay, so if you are Christians, what is most important to you as a Christian should be your relationship with God. Mm. And if you have not discussed your relationship with God with that person, then I don't even know what you're doing. You've never prayed Together? with that person. Mm -hmm. You've never talked anything about scripture with that. Please, um, it's, it's worrisome. Mm -hmm. So I think by the time you're in a relationship with somebody, you should have discussed salvation, mm -hmm. what happened, how you came to know Christ, how you have been growing, where you are at, you know, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think those things are now, uh, say it's private discussion. Don't discuss that one. But so you're going of... to be together. You're going to get married. That's what you're planning mm. to do. So what is more private than you getting married to a man? I don't know. The privacy is between the both of you. You may not want to discuss it with somebody, but even the counselors need to know some of these things. No, so, so it's when we ask so, them uh, their so salvation uh -huh. story, then they're telling us the other spouse, Passing, uh, the other person is now hearing it for the first time, and I'm like, what have they been talking that about? That is the time to be as truthful as possible. Anyway, this truthful, I will hold you to it. I'm All coming right. back because there's, there's something about that truthfulness. So viewers, we're going on break. We've been talking, well, we didn't start from courtship immediately, but we're <laughs> sorting out some issues, some ton, naughty issues about uh, relationships. And then we've veered into courtship, what you should be doing during your courtship period, and things like that. So we'll go and break. When we come back, our number will be on the screen so that you can call us and um, contribute to the conversation. My name is Amaka Ucheke, and I've been here with Mrs. Ibi Namo talking on courtship. So see you right after the break. Democracy is the theory that common people know what they want and deserve to get it good and hard. Join me every Friday, 7 p.m. on National Talk for analysis as well as in-depth perspective on issues as they unfold in and around Nigeria, as well as an opportunity to add your voice. Welcome, viewers. We're back from the break. Before we went on break, we were talking about courtship, what you should be doing during courtship. Right here on um, Equa TV International at the Living Room, I've been here with Mrs. I.B. Namo, who has been very blowing hot about things girls shouldn't do. And one of the things we raised that girls, please, let's reduce our longer, longer throats. Throat. Eh? Don't be chopping people's money that you know you don't plan to marry. Uh, and then you shouldn't have that entitlement mentality that men must always be giving you something. Because when you keep asking for something, they too, they want something in return. So 
and then we should define our relationships. Okay. So in the courtship, we were talking about what we should be doing during the courtship, the kind of things we should be discussing. Um, we should talk about our faith. We should talk about what we believe, our value systems, how we expect our homes to be, how many children we want to have. Our culture. Um, culture, how we want to run, run our finances. Uh -huh. Uh, who is going to work, who will not work, is everybody going to work, and stuff like that. Where are we going to live? Those are the things we should discuss. We shouldn't um, come to the marriage that the future will be a surprise package. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least you should have discussed some things before you get, yes, there's some surprise in future, but let it yeah. not be that there are things that we didn't talk about, then we start fighting, quarreling, and disagreeing mm -hmm. after we have uh, got, got married. Now, she talked about, um, before we went on break, uh, Mrs. Namo had talked about telling, speaking the truth and being open to the person you are going to get married to. And I have a question on that. But meanwhile, viewers, our phone lines are open. The number is on the screen. And we're expecting your calls to make your comments, ask questions, or generally contribute to the conversation. So, um, I know somebody several years ago, they were both Christians, and um, he was planning to marry this lady. They were cutting, let me put it like that. And in the process of the relationship, the girl now says she's had um, an abortion before. She did an abortion um, and he ended the relationship. Oh. And I asked him why he did that. And he says that he was very disappointed. Is somebody calling in? Is somebody calling? Hello? It's not clear. Okay, when it becomes clear, you speak up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he says he's he was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. That his problem wasn't the fact, just the fact that she had had an abortion before, mm -hmm. but that she had the abortion when she was a Christian, and that he couldn't take. Mm -hmm. That if she d had done it when she was not born again, mm -hmm. it's fine. Mm -hmm. But that she, as a Christian, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. And he couldn't take it, so mm -hmm. he, he ended the relationship. So what do you think? So Should you if, tell everything? If he had found out uh, about the abortion when they are married, is he going to stop the marriage? That one is married now. Uh, that's the point. That uh, means for him to be disappointed to the extent. Like somebody is calling. Yeah, my yeah. name is Peter. Yeah. Yes. Peter, I, I have a friend, a friend of mine, mm. who uh, happened to be Esther, and the girl. Is intending to marry, it's also an asset. So, okay. two of this them is... has agreed to go into the marriage, but uh, there are these very discouraging uh, moments from people, even pastors, to an extent that a pastor who agrees that two of them should go on in this marriage, when they found out that, when they found out that they are asset, so he said, no, 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 they can't go. Even to an extent that he said that God is not speaking again. No. Initially, he said that God spoke, that they are good to go. But when they fell, told him that they are excess. God he, stopped speaking. He rejected and kicked against him. So what is your encouragement to these two couples? Okay. Um, so, thank you very much, Peter, for calling in. So, to yes. A intending couple, they are yeah. not yet married, they are, they are okay. going to marry. Okay. All right. Yes. Thank you for even reminding us. The other, one of the things that they, people also need to talk about when they are cutting uh, is yeah. also um, health related yeah. issues. The genotype, genotype, HIV, HIV hepatitis B. Is, uh, you need to tell them. If you have yeah. any other congenital problems, yeah. people should know mm. so that people can decide. And it doesn't stop people from getting married. People mm. can decide. Um, I've known people who decided to marry somebody who was HIV positive. They were not, but yeah. they said they would go ahead. Yeah. That's what they wanted. So, um, but you be open about it so that yeah. it's not a surprise package yeah. for the person. Now, regarding um, sickle cell, SS, SS. Now, the, the common thing people talk, will complain about is that they are both AS, AS. Yeah. And so they will, the chances of having children that are sickless is high. Yeah. You know, it's... it's um, the chances are um, high that they could have children that are sickless, about 25% chance. Mm. But that doesn't mean that, you know, it's not that one child 
out of four will be a C class. Sometimes all the children may be C class. class. Sometimes none, you know, when it's AS. But if the two are SS, that's both of them are C class. That means all their children will be are going to be C class. Oh. All. And I don't know whether that's what you want they to want do. To. I don't know whether that's what you want to do because you need to also think of the children oh. you are going to bring into Except the world. Except you are planning to get married and not have kids. And not children. have kids. It's possible or you decide to adopt kids. Oh. But you should consider the children or when you are, um, when you are getting um, married. married. But um, from, well, I'm not a pastor, but I think two adults, what they need from you is um, counseling mm. and um, to have the proper information. So you give them the right information as much as possible. Get them to see healthcare uh, personnel, professionals so, yeah. or personnel who will give them, you know, proper, proper counseling. And when you finish advising, okay, them, they decide they want to go on. AS, AS, not SS. SS. Okay. okay. But even if they're AS, AS, yeah. we've counseled them. You tell them the risk involved and they say they want to go on. They are adults. Can't, yes, you can't stop you them. Can't stop them. You, yeah. you, you, you let them do what they want to do. It's their choice. It's their life. And they are the ones that will live with the consequences. Uh -huh. But you need to just let them know what is at stake. So and if, if they say that's what they want to do. So what about... Hello? Yeah, we're, we're, hearing. we're hearing you, Peter. Hello? We can hear you. Peter, we what can... about the men of God that are kicking against it? Men no, of God no, are no, strongly They do not have that it. right. Perhaps. I don't think anybody has the right. To understand that they told them that no shots will wear them. How can it's they not say true. that? It's not that true. How can they say that? They can't no. say that now. They can't say that. They can't say that. Churches yeah. can wear you, but yeah. the thing is, they, they should they tell should, you the uh -huh. truth. And then they should find out that both parties are aware. Where? And if you say you want to go then, ahead, uh -huh. the same thing with HIV. If you come with results, one person is HIV positive, the other one is negative. They've told both of you that this one is negative, this one is positive. And you, and you say to. you want to go ahead. You tell them the risk involved. They say that's yeah. what they want to do. Yeah. They, All you, they you need is go. proper information. Mm -hmm. They need to know what is involved. They need to know what, to, what they expect in the future from the marriage. Having known all of that, and they still agree with themselves, it's both of themselves, yeah. both of them that are involved. They still agree with themselves that they are going ahead. I don't think any anybody church should, or any anybody pastor should stop, should them. stop them from mm. getting married. And this one, they even told you, I've known of people who hid their genotype from everybody. Uh -huh. Church, family, nobody knew. The girl didn't tell her family that the guy, the guy is AS. Is. The guy didn't tell his family that the girl was AS. They hid it until they started having children and see class started appearing. Mm. <laughs> and then it was a shock to everybody. So if what they want to do, they will do. So you just cancel your mm. advice. And if, uh, the, if the church, in fact, it's better for the church to be involved, you know, with counsel and prayer. Because if the church should stand against them, there are other ways of getting married. It's not just church marriage. Exactly. That and there's nothing so they you can, can do about If they it. go to the court, the court will not tell them that because they are ASAS, -A 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 they won't get married. So it is wrong for any pastor to tell them that they cannot get married and all that. They should just give them the necessary information. Yeah. And as adults, let them be consenting adults. Let them be the ones to make the choices, not that you are forcing it on them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, back to how much can you tell <coughs> or how much should you tell your if, intending spouse uh, okay. about your the, life, the guy about who your is, past life? Uh, the guy who is saying that um, he's... Um, angry because or he's disappointed uh -huh, let me use this or he's disappointed because she was a christian when she did the mm -hmm. abortion is he saying that since he became a christian he has not made any mistake himself that's i the don't point. know because Maybe the fact that you are a, a christian does not mean that you can't make a mistake i think the fact that the girl spoke it, she didn't keep because if she never told him, he wouldn't oh, have no. known. Yeah, the true. fact that the girl came up with a story and told him, he has a choice to continue or not to continue. But I think the girl did the right thing by telling him. Okay, so you so don't think people should, in quotes, <laughs> yeah. manage information? No, 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 no. no. Because they should tell everything. They, okay. What do you really want to hide to somebody you are getting married? Okay. Somebody wants to call, somebody's calling in. Yeah. Yes. We can hear you. Is it still Peter? I don't know. <laughs> Peter, is it still you or this is someone else? Okay, sound has gone. Okay, okay let's so go. So 
we, we, you cannot, we, I don't think you should hoard information because sometimes this information comes back to haunt you, you know, and you, you already told, you made, you, you made uh, your partner know that you are a saint, no, nothing is wrong with you, you are a good Christian, you are okay, you don't have any problem, and then you get married, and three or four years down the line, this thing starts coming up. It's better that you tell the truth now and let the courtship, if possible, if it is not going to work, let the courtship work, uh, break. Because there are other men who will take you and marry you. But we see the problem is the fear of the unknown. You know, sometimes you just don't want, if I tell him or if I tell her, this relationship may end. I don't know what my ch chances are out there, you know. You know, especially when you've come to that point of desperation. You're That's not sure, why so you shouldn't be desperate, not, okay. actually. So That's what we're saying is... Tell the truth. Bring out bring out information because no secret. somehow the information will come back. Mm. Because, see, you think that you're hiding something, but you, because there's nothing is hidden per se. Because mm. it was a doctor that did the abortion. There were people who saw it. There were people who knew you were pregnant before the thing happened. You know, so all of these people may not be there when you are managing this information in quotes. What if immediately you get married, suddenly it's like they open the gates and these people start appearing in your life. And maybe, just maybe, because of the abortion you did, you were some having compli problems. complication, some health challenges. And then your man is now called or and told, ah, they, didn't she tell you that she had an abortion before? It is because of that abortion and it was like, you didn't tell me. So it's better to tell these things because they will come back. Somehow yeah. they will find I've a way to come back. I've even seen people even hide that they've had kids. Hmm. And the man will be coming to the family house. So they'll and be seeing the child. Yeah, they will say it's my sister's yeah, it's my sister secret. child or something. And or then my la our last born. Some people just, I know somebody, uh, I know of somebody, she's, she had two children hmm. out of wedlock. She didn't tell the man. Hmm. I think it was a week to the wedding that the man found out. Okay. But he didn't, he didn't back out. He just, well, he just managed. He had a good heart. He, uh, he said there was too much had been, had gone into it. Oh. So he just continued. But two children. I said some people have mind though. How can you two hide children. that kind of information yeah. from the but man do you are it. getting married People to. do it with the How connivance can? of their families. Yeah. Some, some men have hidden their test results and test information. Some are HIV positive. Yeah, they know. That. Some are sterile. They know. Some, you know, how can you be sterile and you didn't tell your wife? And then maybe when you get married and then they can't have children, everybody in your family is seeing your wife as the barren. And you know that and the, the woman is, is not yours. yours. And you are keeping, because the day she will find out, God help that she's a Christian, then things will be better. If she's not a Christian, she will kill you. <laughs> Truly, because this, info, the, the, uh, the, this information you need to tell so that if the person still wants to go ahead, then fine. Mm. If you think that, oh, you are hiding it because you don't want to lose the person, you will still lose the person because the day mm. the person will find out, it might be after you have gotten married, I have gone far in your marriage and the person said, you do this to me, so this trust, marriage, trust, trust is broken. Even if you remain married, trust is broken. The person will no longer want to have anything to do with you and the person might begin to look outside if he's not a Christian. So it is always nice always the best thing to tell honestly is the best policy exactly and honestly i've seen i've seen people with baggage in quotes that got that, married. that got married i i know I, I remember many years ago i knew one girl that got pregnant you know everybody well not everybody but her family was you know very upset about because she had the baby and all that and all that and um she's married now she's married now She's, um, she's, she even married a pastor. Her husband is a pastor. Oh. Right now they're out of the country and all that. And she's doing well. I know she's doing of well. some like that. In fact, one so. of the cases, the man adopted the girl wow. as his first child. In fact, when they went for counseling, they asked oh. him and he said he was going to adopt her as his first child. Okay, somebody is on the line. Hello, we can hear you. Hello. 
he lost it. Yeah. You know, he adopted the girl as his first child. And today, they are doing well. He had three other children. And the girl, if you go to the house, you will never know that yes. that man is not the, the father, father of the oh, girl. That's, that's you know, and so I've seen a lot of cases, not one, you know, of cases like that, that they came out truthfully to tell the people what is involved. And the men still accepted them like that, you know, and got married to them. So it is better to tell the truth. It is better okay. to tell the truth. Then um, while still on it, um, I know that sometimes the problem about this truth thing, you know, when people are saying, put everything on the table, people are thinking of pregnancies, people are thinking yeah. of abortions. Sometimes, too, it may be health problems. Yeah. Aside from um, this sickle cell thing, yeah. maybe health problems. Like I know people who say um, they hide. Like I've had patients who traveled all the way from the east to come to just to do my emectomy. That's surgery for fibroid. And I was actually the lady was a nurse. I'm like, please, why, why all this secrecy? And why are you coming to just? You work in a teaching hospital. Why didn't you just do it? She said, ah. That if they find out, nobody will agree to marry her. Nobody, you know, so she has to hide it and keep it under wraps. So, and I, I know, I even have had a, a friend too. He's, um, there's a girl he wanted to marry at a time. I don't speak to them. Fibroid, he says he's not doing Yes? Yes, we can hear you. We are here. I don't speak to them direct. Yes, okay. yeah. Yes, we can hear you. We are listening. Hello. Hello. Hello, we are listening. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. We are listening. Hello. Hello, we are listening. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah please. The, I have this um, question I want to ask. You just mentioned it before. Okay, go ahead, please. Go ahead, we can hear you. Okay. It about uh, um, somebody that is HIV positive getting married to, to somebody that is not HIV positive. Okay. What was the question? You have a challenge with that? Okay. So, if... You have a challenge with that? No, no, I'm not having... I, what I want to know is, is it because we're having this argument, um, we're having this argument with... Um, I was having a disagreement with one of my friends. They said that the one of the um, uh, uh, partners can that that if they have issues that the the kid would would, would still be no non uh, HIV positive. Yeah, that's true. So um, people who are so I wanted to know if it if it's true or not. Yes, it's true. People who are, dis they we call them serodiscordant. That's the one person is HIV yeah. positive, the other person. One person is HIV positive, the other person is HIV negative. They are serodiscordant. And there are many couples like that who have married. Um, usually, transmission will be very low or zero if the people have, if the person HIV positive has been on drugs, taking his um, HIV med medications regularly, and is, you know, getting good health care then the chances of transmitting to his partner is almost zero you know and so they can have kids and um and then some for s couples too they may decide to use uh, barrier methods of contraception except when they want to do a pregnancy have a pregnancy then they will not use barrier method of contraception so, so some, those are some of the things um that they could do to make sure that they don't have children that are hiv positive and they, they don't transmit to the other person. But one of the key factors is that that person is taking his or her drugs religiously and is in a good state of health. But before you marry, also seek um, medical, medical opinion so that you can be advised accordingly what to do and the way forward. And it is true, the couple do not need to transmit HIV to one another or to their children. It's very doable. Okay, we are still talking about putting everything on the, on the table. On the table. Yeah. Yes, I said, even uh, people, pe pe people say, you yeah, have had fibroid. Yeah. The fibroid operation, they will not marry them. And I don't know why. Uh, people say that if people have had fibroids that they will not get pregnant. It's not true. Huh. People have had fibroids and they get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And it is said that if we can check all the women, all women of reproductive age, 
in this our environment, at least 30% of them will have fibroids. And it's not all fibroids that are symptomatic, that show you symptoms. Mm -hmm. So fibroid is common. And people have got to even, we see women now in labor, in even in labor world, with fibroids, fibroid, and, and yeah. they so are doing okay. The so, children, the baby, mm. and so don't the fibroid is going. Hello. Okay. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, hello sir. We can hear you. Yeah, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Go ahead. Go. We are listening. It's like we've lost him. Mm. Okay. So I think before people take decisions based on whether health or whatever, you should ask questions exactly. and get the right information Most before times, you take decisions. Most times, it is usually uh, all these uh, um, old women's tales that people yeah. get, uh, have, get information from. Hey, HIV is this, you know, before, before um, enlightenment, people used to think that HIV, you can drink it in water. <laughs> when you are sleeping, you sleep on the uh, same bed with somebody, you just catch it. But, but people know, can, yes. But when you shake hands, mm, you just catch, catch it. it and things like that. But, but now for my people, yes, HIV is sexually transmitted. Yeah. But with the advent of highly active antiretroviral yeah. drugs that people are taking, HIV transmission, very low. And HIV is really not killing people. You know? uh, at all. Uh -huh. So when people were not taking drugs, people were hiding it. That was when that. They were so now, even if it's HIV, put it on the table. The person may still want to go ahead and marry exactly. you. If the person decides he doesn't or she he or she doesn't want, fine. Life goes on. God will bring your own. Uh -huh. And uh, we move on. Uh -huh. Okay. So you need to be as truthful as, as possible. possible. So put all in your cards court, on the table. In a courtship, before you say, yes, I do, please know, tell each other the truth. Be open to each other because... The chaos in marriage, when you people don't tell each other the truth, is even more than if you tell each other the truth and you have to separate before marriage. So on this note, um, we'll end about telling each other the truth. And you talk about everything. Past, well, people say that they don't know whether she should tell about all the past relationships and all the things they have done. Health issues, please tell. I know people who have problems, they have some congenital issues, uh -huh. they were not born with wombs, they are not menstruating. Uh -huh. Please put it on the table. If the person loves you like that, fine, you go ahead. If the person says he can't or she can't, so be it, we move on. But let us not enter a marital relationship with Based deceits. Based on lies and, lies and, and deceits. Deceit. It's, it's, in the long run, it will not work out well for us. Uh -huh. Let's be honest. And uh, Christians should be truthful. Christians should be people of integrity and we should be honest. Mm -hmm. So let's put our cards on the table. So I've spoken about what to do about courtship. I don't know whether I'll finish this discussion today. today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll continue again mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. week. Yeah. We'll be talking about courtship, what to do during your courtship period. We said it's time to talk about everything, you know, mm -hmm. everything, including your faith, your work with God, mm -hmm. pray together, and plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will help us. No secrets, no pretense, be truthful. Yeah. That's what we have said. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. Namo, Thank you very much once again for thank being you. here. Yeah. And also, Amaka Ucheki, I'm thanking myself <laughs> for also being here. Yeah. Thank you, viewers, for watching and yeah. hanging in with us till the yeah. end of this program. Yeah. We've been here on the, uh, in the living room at Equa Television. Thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you again. Same time, same place next week. God bless you and let's go there shining for Jesus. Bye. Bye.